The inspiration for our gameplay ambitions is primarily derived from Rainbow Six Raven Shield, Do Six, System Shock 2 and Half-Life. We've invested everything we've earned in Early Access back into developing the core experience available today. First person simulating helmet and tactical HUD, smooth character movement and weapon handling to create a real sense of presence of your body in the game. We've laid the groundwork in AI, allowing robots to navigate, operate weapons and perform basic melee attacks. We currently have two work-in-progress mission simulations available in both single-player and co-op. Assault on Starcrown Aerospace. Infiltrate the tight security at Starcrown Research and try to steal the plans for the Altair project. The Neurogen Incident. Board the Neurogen Research Station to find out why scientists have killed everybody on board. We've also made five small incursions, Escape from Nucleus, Terrorist Hunt on Stronghold, a Mainline, and Survival on Operations and Colony. Finally, we have introduced our unique sandbox combat arena in the making called War Games. War Games is nine distinct interconnected environment zones, each running on its own server, allowing 64 players to join in the scavenge for combat points, playing alone or in co-op. Peggy 16. Achieved with CryEngine. Greetings and welcome to the third episode of a tutorial series aimed to explain some of the tools you'll be using while playing Crazy Machines 3. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at wiring and signal chips. This episode builds on lessons and knowledge found in my two previous tutorial videos, which covered the machine editor and part editor. Signal wiring is a powerful tool that allows you to create complex machines and very cool effects but it is a little more complicated as a result, so I recommend watching this tutorial after you've gotten to grips with the basics. Before we begin wiring, we need to discuss chips. Chips are how we represent complicated concepts such as conditional triggers or even arithmetic inside our machines. In all cases, the chips themselves, while placed into the machine in much the same way that you could drag an element or part from the catalog, have no physical presence. They are concepts which can either be attached to a part or the machine itself. In some cases, chips offer a way for the machine and part to communicate in some meaningful way, as with the inlet and outlet chips. And in others, they can simply represent a number or a mathematical operation such as division or subtraction. Or they can be part of a special effect such as a sound playing or changes to the camera. But regardless of their diversity, Something all chips have in common is that they need to be wired to something, or each other, to actually have an effect. 
Unfortunately, a thorough rundown of all the varied effects made possible through the use of signal chips is outside the scope of a single tutorial episode. So instead, let me demonstrate some of the versatility by adding a camera to our machine that will follow the progress of our truck as it crosses the seesaw bridge. To do this, we'll first need a new part that will represent our camera. First, we need to create a camera effect. Be aware that while there is a camera element, we specifically require the effect, as the element itself is merely a physical model, not an actual camera. As with many of the effects, the camera has several inputs which can be wired to adjust how the camera will work. In this case, the inputs from top to bottom are an object input. Generally speaking, where a signal or chip relates to an object, it will be an orange color, and where it relates to an actual signal, it will be blue. The object input tells the camera what part to focus on, though this is optional. Next, we have the activation input. If this input receives a positive signal and the player has automatic camera control activated, then the player's view will switch to this camera. Finally, we have the zoom input. Like the activation input, this one expects a signal, but whereas the activation input expects a binary signal, either true or false, this input will set the camera's zoom based on the value of the signal it receives. Any real number between 0, the minimum zoom level, and 1, the maximum zoom level, will be accepted. Many inputs are optional, as is the case with all of the inputs from the camera. But as we specifically want our camera to follow an object, in this case, the truck, at least the object input is required. However, Something to be aware of is that signal chips and wiring are contained inside a part. That is to say, once we leave the part editor and return to the machine, the inner workings of the chips and access to the signal inputs will be hidden from us. So we must create a way for this part to talk to the machine and receive signals from other parts or the machine itself. We can do this by adding an object inlet chip to this part. It's worth remembering that the chip itself is insubstantial. It isn't a physical model that will be visible to the player, so you can place these chips anywhere that is convenient for you. This is important as complex logic can involve dozens of chips, so be sure to leave yourself plenty of room or it may become difficult to see which chips are wired to each other. Thankfully, it is possible to move a chip after wiring it and it will retain its connections. Once we've wired the inlet chip to our camera, we can return to the editor and position the camera in the machine. In this case, it makes sense to position the camera back from the 2D plane a little bit. That way, as the truck runs along, the camera can make a cinematic sweep to follow the truck's progress. With that done, all we need to do is wire the truck directly to the camera's object inlet chip. Now we can test our camera by pressing the play button and switching to our new camera at the bottom of the screen. And as you can see, the camera dutifully follows the truck with a dramatic cinematic sweep. But while this is nice, there's much more we can do. And in the interest of showing some of the other ways we can play with signal chips, let's change the camera zoom level from the default to something a little closer. To set a whole number value, we can simply use the constant chip. This chip will constantly output its value as a signal. To set the value, you simply click and drag the value slider clockwise or anti-clockwise to increase or decrease the value. However, it's unfortunately not quite as easy to set a signal to a value that lies between two whole numbers. If we want to set our camera zoom halfway between the minimum and maximum zoom levels, we're going to need to use multiple chips to perform a mathematic operation. Here you can see that I've used two whole numbers, in this case 5 and 10, and wired them to the division operation chip. This chip will divide input A by input B and output the result in this case 0 0.5, which we can wire directly into the camera's zoom input. But we're not done there. With the inclusion of a signal inlet chip, we could toggle the camera on, given some positive signal from the machine. And if you recall, there is a signal outlet chip already built into the truck, which toggles on when the truck is turned on. Now, with those changes in place and the truck's signal outlet wired up to the camera, as long as the player is using the automatic camera mode, when the truck gets turned on, the camera will toggle to our cinematic camera. Now, before we wrap up this tutorial, while I'm certain you can already imagine many ways you could use signal chips to create interesting effects, 
let's add something to our machine that's a little more spectacular than a camera. And for this, we're going to need to edit our seesaw bridge. Here I have a detonator chip. As you can imagine from the name, it causes things to explode. It receives two inputs. The first is a signal which triggers the chip, and the second is the object which should explode when it's triggered. The chip doesn't have any output signal. Additionally, we'll need a touch sensor chip to detect any collisions with the oil barrel. This chip can receive two inputs. The top is wired to the object that should detect the collision, while the second input can optionally be wired to an object which can trigger the collision. If no object is wired to the second input, the sensor will detect all collisions. This chip outputs a signal whose value is the impact force of any detected collision. All we've done is wire the oil barrel to the detonator and touch sensor chips such that a collision will trigger the detonator and destroy the barrel. Finally, as I want to be sure only a collision from the truck should trigger the detonator, we'll add an object inlet chip so we can wire the truck up as the second input for the touch sensor. At last, all that remains is to wire up the truck to the object inlet chip on the barrel and test. And that was spectacularly satisfying. But I'm afraid that's all there's time to cover in this tutorial. I hope I've been able to whet your appetite with this small demonstration of how to wire signal chips and effects to add more interactivity and fun to your machines. There are dozens of chips and effects to play with, and I encourage you to experiment. Of course, as with all of my tutorial videos, if you have any questions, then feel free to post a comment, either on this video or in the Crazy Machines 3 Community Hub on Steam. But until next time, have fun. I'm Captain Buckman, the best space runner in the damn universe. Your job is simple. Deliver my clients' goods across the galaxy and protect them from anything that stands in your way. Space is a dangerous place. Between asteroids, pirate ships, and bloodthirsty aliens, keeping your cargo in one piece ain't gonna be easy. With multiple systems, each filled with planets, stations, and trading posts, there's a whole lot of space out there. You'll always find someone in need of a good space runner. Wisecracking primates looking to ship fragile samples. Shady corporations wanting to get who knows what to God knows where. The riskier the job, the bigger the reward. The persistent online universe lets you take on contracts from your fellow players or hire them to ship your goods for you. If you're so inclined, you can even corner the online black market. Buy low, sell high, and soon you'll be the contraband kingpin of your sector. Now, you ain't gonna be much of a space runner if you're riding around in a piece of junk. Over time, you'll build a collection of useful materials. Use them to improve your ship or invest in some serious weaponry. Something you don't ever want to be in short supply of. Laser turrets, shield generators, missile launchers, decoy probes, ion cannons, plasma missiles, high drive boosters. You're gonna need them all on those tougher jobs. Unleash giant plasma beams, heal up your ship's broken parts, or fire off a huge barrage of missiles. Just keep your wits about you in the uncharted regions. If you thought pirates were the worst of it, <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet.
Super scene, gotta hit the scene, maybe make some cream. Remember who you are before you get what you want. What we get can change us and we're gone. So we work on our craft till dawn. Up in the boot to the say we on. Making moves like I took your pawns. Just spit the truth and I'm up and gone. Yeah. We even get to oh. I said I'm moving too far